Morning, gentlemen. <coughs> Jim Bounds and Mark Creel with Motor Home Rehab Ranch here. Good morning. All right. Well, trying to get back to the normal things that I do in life, and we talk about motorhomes and stuff like that and what to do and what not to do. Okay. Um, coming across country, JG did a heck of a job. After sitting for two years in the ready room at the shop, I hopped in that sucker. And we drove to Utah in it, okay? Daring. Daring. Very daring. Don't do this at home. <clears throat> and then, it make that worse, we passed up what, what it took us to get there, the problems we had, and then we drove it another 2,000 miles here to Bessemer, Alabama. And which, survived. And survived. That's right. All that's wrong. And sometimes the way we learn things are by messing up. Well... Learn from doing this. Don't do what we did. Okay. So here we are right now. <clears throat> We're, I'm still a uh, fur piece from home, as they say. Uh, and we have a leaky water pump, which I've always said to you guys, if you wait more than uh, two years and not fire it up, pretty soon the water pump's going to leak. Well, it took us to get halfway back from Utah, but some gun started leaking. We're going to talk about that. Um, timing chain was loose on you when I left and uh, I, we could watch it on the vacuum gauge you could hit the, hit, the, hit the gas go up the hill and that vacuum would go boom right on the floor yep. you know if we didn't have fuel injection where it's squirting it even at two inches if you have a carburetor and you hit five inches of vacuum baby you're done you know <clears throat> you're not going up that hill that's right you're not going to go up that hill or you're going to go up it real slow what makes it go slow? Because you run out of vacuum. Okay, that's we. I, I know that I have a bad timing chain. Things were too crazy out there in Utah to even consider doing something like that. So we just uh, loaded up JG and we brought it to Alabama. We're going to do that, and we're going to be able to video that for you. Okay, so this is going to be a real in-depth thing about what are you going to do when you know the timing chain's loose and you now have a water pump leak not something to be ignored no it will bite you <clears throat> now i tell you you know i've always told people to pull off the fuel pump and stick your finger in there and i'm telling you 95 percent of the time everybody go whoa mark's got a great way to do this listen to this guys go ahead talk about this for, for those of you that uh really don't believe it a easy check if you have two people that are mechanically able to pull all the spark plugs and the uh distributor cap and have one person uh, rotate the crankshaft. Uh, the first thing you would do would be to mark the rotor button on the housing right. and then have one person underneath with a uh, pull bar that can rotate the engine and if communication skills are proper, rotate the uh, crankshaft until the, this, the, until the rotor button moves and then mark that and then rotate the other direction. Uh, there will be a gap there in uh, uh, in degrees on your balancer, and you would actually see how far that strain has chain has stretched. Uh, the average is uh, at fifty thousand miles would be twenty degrees or more, and this That's would the difference in the chain just being the chain loose. It's a wonderful. You can actually see it. The guy moves that crank down there, right, and it'll just sit there a while, and then it'll start moving. Now all that time is loose that that's okay. called that's called retard uh long before we ever had headers for these engines jim we had a terrible time trying to keep exhaust manifolds on them and actually you had a blowtorch that was on them because of the uh, retarded condition of the of the camshaft the right. exhaust valves were actually still open <clears throat> long after they should have been shut <clears throat> right well this is a really good way to check that so everybody just go pull your distributor cap off, put a piece of tape on the set of the distributor where it's pointing right then. Have somebody go down there and you don't, you don't even have to pull the plug. I mean, no, you, you don't, don't have to. Just grab it. Just grab a, a a breaker bar on the on the the nut on the harmonic balancer and move it. See how long it takes for that thing to move. Okay, I bet your mind they probably have to pack a lunch to watch it move. All right. Because, you know, but that's a wonderful way to prove to you guys these old engines run fantastic. 
But I'm telling you, it ran all the way from Orlando to Utah and Utah to Bessemer, Alabama, and ran like a champ. We were proud of it. We got 14-something miles a gallon getting our foot out of it. You know, and everybody said, oh, that's great, my motor, I love my motor, and that thing's doing everything it can to keep, keep up because that chain is absolutely loose, all right? So <clears throat> first part of this episode one is why am I doing this? Why am I putting myself through this, this, this beginning to be heartache a little bit? Well, that's why. The top of the motor and the front of the motor. If you get the front of the motor all happy and get, get the timing chain and the water pump and new belts and all that, if you, make, you make the front of the motor happy and then you pull the intake up and you put block off plates and, and a gasket set in there put, and you get the top of the motor happy, yes, these motors will. Make the mileage. Survive, yes. They will survive. But if you don't do that, they will not. Okay? So, all right. <clears throat> Our project here is going to be changing the water pump and the timing chain on the ground right here. And then we're going to do it for you. And we're going to be videoing it. So, uh, please stay with us on this, on this episode. First part, <clears throat> you don't touch it. And we've been waiting a week until you get your parts going. Well, no, first thing that we did, and I'll show you stills here, is get a, get a, a can of Easy Off Oven Cleaner, okay, and shoot the whole front of the motor, and even if you don't have a pressure washer, which we did, but if you don't, even if you don't. Hose it off. Yeah, you hose it off because you're gonna save in laundry detergent on your clothes. You're gonna come up looking pretty rough if you get, if you, because the front of that motor's been belching stuff out of it for a while. Good news on doing all this, you're gonna put a front main seal on it. And I'll guarantee you it's been blowing, blowing stuff out of there for, uh, what, 20 years or something? So clean it up first. We're letting that happen right now. We're cleaning it up and it's, it's drying out and whatever's gonna fall out, we hose it down the yard, you know. So that's the first thing. Next thing, let's talk about parts. You don't want to start this until you have all of your parts here. Every piece. Every piece. So this is a good, a good uh, uh, view on how it goes. We pulled into Bessemer, made a parts list, and went down to the Napa store. Now you say Napa, oh, they're too much, they're this and that. Let me tell you something. You can get the part. You can get the part. I was in Utah, and Napa was the only one that knew there was ethanol-resistant fuel hose. Napa was the only place that had on the shelf a 10-millimeter Ford inline fuel filter. They had it. And, yeah, it was a couple of bucks more. But their distribution can get the part. Okay? Good call. You know, it's just how it is. Now, when we got there... We had a selection of things we're going to show you that they had. And then they had some stuff. It'll be here Tuesday. It'll be here Thursday. That's the way marketing is today. Okay? You've got it. You're working on parts on an old snowmobile. I'm, I'm sorry, Oldsmobile. Yeah. Part, all the parts won't be there. That doesn't make that guy a bad guy. And when he can look it up on his computer and all the part numbers I'm going to give you, he can find that thing, give him a gold watch. Right? All right, well, here we go. <clears throat> First thing, you're going to, anytime you open your cooling system, you change the thermostat. Period. Change thermostat. Yes. Right. Would really suck taking the motor out because the thermostat got stuck because it dried out and it got good. It would be a problem. Now, if the thermostat housing looks rough. You said, well, I'll clean it up. You can buy another one, and they're reasonably cheap. Part number is, you got a pen, you better run get a pen and paper, because this is going to be, this part is all part numbers. Part number for a new thermostat housing is 902-2016. Now, let me explain how it works. You go into a parts store, and you say you need a water pump. The guy says, what's the year of your car? Well, that's not the way to do it. But what he's doing is he's feeding himself into their parts identification system. And they can put in a part number, and it will give them 
well, that part number could be a thermostat housing, that part number could be a muffler bearing, that part right. could be a, you know, and you select which one it is. That's how his computer system works. So he needs to have somewhere to go. And the first place that he always goes is what's the car. We don't need what the car is. But if you give him some part numbers, no matter what the part is, he can usually figure out what that part is and, and find it, okay? So, if you want a thermostat housing, you tell him thermostat housing for a Tornado, but your part number is 902-2016, he won't put in thermostat housing for a... He'll put in that number, and he'll find the thermostat housing with that number on it, and maybe that's what you want. Yeah, many parts houses will not even talk to you about a parts for a 76 Model Oldsmobile. Uh, they'll be showing you the door, but if you do have that parts part number, uh, they're going to take an interest because you have a part number. And, and, and their system was put together to identify part numbers. Exactly. Okay, so all these part numbers I'm giving you, real important. All right, your thermostat gasket, okay, is a 35130, okay? That's, that's the gasket when you buy a thermostat. Now, it'll come with a Chevy gasket. This is an Oldsmobile. Oldsmobile gasket has, but uh, yeah, it shows up better this side. Three it's, got, it's got three holes, not two. This is your bypass hole. Okay, so when you buy a thermostat, you want to get a 180 degree thermostat, anything but a Robert Shaw. Hmm? Robert Shaw has too much of a flow. We need to hold the water. We need a restrictor plate to hold the water in our motor long enough to grab the heat and to get it out. If you just move cold water through it at, at an unbelievable rate, it won't pull any heat out. No. Okay? A, ther a Robert Shaw thermostat says they have increased flow. We do not want increased flow. It don't go that. <laughs> All right. So any brand but a Robert Shaw, and you want to get this gasket. If your thermostat housing looks bad, the one I gave you is like a cast aluminum. It's very pretty, too. If you're into that, you may want to get that. All right. Next thing is your water pump. Now, they didn't have it. They didn't have it there. But it'll be here actually yesterday. We're going to wait and give them a little more time. Part number, a Delco part number, is 251-231. That's the original Delco pump. And we're using a Gates pump, and the number is 43100. 43100. Okay? Now, there's different snout links. Well, is that a long one or a short one? I don't know, dude. It's the one that fits. <laughs> and then if you say, well, I'm going to go to a uh, uh, serpentine belt layer, fine. You use an adapter plate, a little shim kit that shims it up. The only thing, listen to me, guys, the only thing that is out of alignment on a CVF racing or something you can consider is the water pump pulley because everything else is on that aluminum billet plate. Right. So somebody says, well, we shim this, we shim this. No, you didn't. No, you didn't. The only thing that gets shimmed is the water pump bullet. So don't worry if it's a long or short one. You don't have enough time to worry about that. Buy that one. Boom. All right? A uh, uh, fan clutch. Well, it seems like it works. Dude, you're going to be in the middle of BFE, and that fan clutch is going to go out, and you're going to say, oh, Put any fan clutch in it, unless you know it's only three weeks old or something like that. Maybe the sticker's still on or something, but it, it's too much of a hassle to change it. There, uh, Hayden just about bought the world in fan clutches, True, right? Uh, a 2707, 2708, 07 is an uh, original stock fan clutch for a Tornado. Not strong enough, okay? Uh, a 2747... Hayden, or they, Napa takes, I think, the first number off, and that's their number. But a 2747 is a, uh, a heavy-duty one, and you'll hear it. It'll come on some weird time, and it goes off. To me, that's working in the range because it's turning on and off. It's where you need it. It's good. It's talking to you. That's right. I like Let it talking you know. to me. But well, I heard that. Oh, why do I hear that? Oh. Yeah, you do. It's just saying that's an audible indicator that the son of a gun's working. It's a good thing. It's a good thing. The 2797 is a severe duty fan clutch for a diesel engine. It's basically, these are all GM fan clutches. They just looked at the chart 
said, well, heck, that'll fit. But at 2797, you'll think your, your motorhome's a B-52. It will be making noise. Now, it'll be quiet. I mean, I mean, it'll be, you'll have low water temp, but right. holy moly. You know, you're wearing earplugs. Right. You know, so unless you're, you're in the middle of nowhere. And listen, if you're in the middle of nowhere and the fan clutch just gives up and just freewheels, had that happen to me. I took three uh, self-tapping screws in my screw gun. <laughs> I drilled Fixed. three screws, tech screws into that fan clutch. It was solid. I had two B-52s all the <laughs> way from Texas to Orlando. Two B-52s taken off, but it really stayed cool, and I did not get on the side of the road and have to have Bubba and Scooter put in a fan clutch for me. Right. Okay. So you just change the thing right now, okay? Uh, they didn't have the fan clutch. They're going to bring it in. Oil filter, 51258 Wix. Check this out, 1258. Napa took the front the first number off and it's the Napa number. So when you do this, you're gonna you're gonna flow oil through there. You're gonna be putting in some Permatex. You may get some little you know dust bunnies in the oil. We're gonna dump the oil when this is all over and put a new filter and new oil and the whole nine yards in there. Okay. They did have an oil filter. Okay. Uh <clears throat> There's an oil filter uh, uh, cooler housing that the oil filter is bolted to. It's aluminum. It has two hoses coming out that go to the water uh, uh, radiator. Those have a susceptibility of cracking. True. You know? So when you pull out the filter, you look up in there on that, on that center thread is a nut. Take that nut off and then take that housing down. Now, there's a seal in there just like uh, is on the oil filter. Oil filter right. What I do is take the oil oil filter, whip take the seal off, off of it, and throw it up there in the top. Good idea. You know, but you want to take that thing off and look at it real carefully. There's not a hairline crack on it. And then put it back in. Because if you lose oil at the oil filter, by the time your, your sender at the top of the motor says, oh, we got an oil problem. Could be too late. It's, could be, the, the bottom of that engine is, is shot. It, you know. So... You want to check that oil filter housing, okay? Fan belts. Well, the fan belts are working. Through. Now, take the damn things off and change them, okay? Uh, uh, your part numbers uh, on, on your alternator is a 7570. Gates, these are Gates numbers. And again, you put the number in there, he can probably find it. 7570. 7450 is your power steering. And a 7619 is your air conditioning. And that's for a 455. A 403, uh, uh, instead of the 7450, you get a 7435. But look at the belts, because over the years, somebody could have put a different pulley on there or something like that. What was working is what you want to get. It's not like a better one because it's a better number. Right. It, it fits. Might have a lawnmower pulley on it or something. Yeah, yeah. you, you know, never know. You never know what's on it. It's been 50 years of good intentions. Hey, it worked on my snapper. Let's put this thing on here. So, anyway, time and chain. We're running, this is running really, really long. I tell you what, let's stop right here. We're going to do an episode two, and we're going to start with parts of the time and chain right there. Okay? We want to keep, we want to keep all the internet people happy and all that kind of stuff. But this is a very, very important stuff. So, Keep all this, look at all this, and get ready for episode two, all right? Well, look, thank you for listening to this. I hope this is now some of the things you really want from us, and this is what we really want to give to you, okay? Motor and Rehab Ranch is here to tell you how to do it. And this will, could be possibly one of the first videos that we get to really show you what is down and dirty, because we're going to get into this right here, right now. And it will pay off in the long run. That's right. You want you to use to this, this coach. All right. Well, look, thank you for the time. Click like, uh, share, subscribe, all that stuff. And do it on Patreon, too. And give me some comments on what you think. It's important because that drives us. All right? Well, look, thank you very much. And wait for episode two. All right.